bike here like this. His bike, his bicycle, was in these bushes. Was standing up in these bushes. Right here to the side of the tree. Standing up. So he's laying down right about here. And his head is right about here. Where I'm putting the baseball. And I'm over there and I said, Come on, get up, Luke. And he wasn't getting up. And I pulled my car over there, where your car is parked right now. OK. I get out of my car. And I walk up to him. And I see him laying there, Luke. And on, I'm on the left side of his face. There's no blood, and his eyes are closed, and, it's a, and he's laying there, and I, I, I said, he's unconscious. Then I noticed blood on the right side of his face, and the top of his lip was split. If you come on over here, here's his, here's his head, his arms are to his side. And his, and his feet are there. He just looked relaxed, like he was asleep. And there still seemed to be breathing with bubbles of coming from his nose and a kind of a wheezing sound while he's there. Car came by, and they said, do you need help? And I said, yes, please call 911. Then another car, call 911. And then a car pulled over here with some young people in it in their 20s, and one of them was Ray King, and he came rushing over, and a group of people gathered, and cars were stopped, and were waiting for the ambulance. And at first, I, didn't, I had no idea what to do. I knew he shouldn't be moved. He had his helmet on a green helmet, and I'm down like this, and then a woman who was also calling 911 was on the phone to EMTs, and they were saying, you need to give him compressions and mouth to mouth. At one point, somebody suggested take his helmet off. People gathered around, were all chanting at the same time, Stay with us, Luke. Stay with us, Luke. Woman with long blonde hair is kneeling next to me on the phone. Nobody wanted to touch him except somebody helped to take his helmet off. And I made sure he'd keep his neck straight and his head down. I thought he was unconscious. Bubbles were coming out of his nose. It seemed like he was breathing. I gave him compressions and mouth to mouth with my mouth against his bloody mouth, opening up his mouth and tried to breathe in and it, to try to breathe my breath into him and something seemed to be a little bit stuck there, but there were still bubbles coming out of his nose. The EMTs finally showed up. It seemed like 15 minutes. And they showed up, and uh, they immediately brought, uh, I, I believe it's called an AED ev device mm -hmm. uh, for his heart. They would, somebody had checked his pulse a little bit earlier, and I noticed that they had used their thumb to check his pulse, somebody who was just standing here wasn't a professional but knew something and thought that he had a pulse. So the EMTs came, two ambulances finally came, and they put the things on him, the, 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 the portable AED device, and tried to start. And one of the EMTs had a 
stethoscope and listen, and he was the leader of the EMTs. They got him on a stretcher, and there were two ambulances. They didn't brace his neck. They couldn't decide which ambulance, so they were almost like the Keystone Cops. They went running over to that one, and his head's wobbling around all like that. And then they went over to this one, and they said, you get in and talk to him. Ray King, who was there, I later knew his name because he came to the hospital along with his group of friends, grabbed Luke's bike, put it on my bike, in my, in my car, on my rack. We had, I had my bicycle with me, and I had decided not to ride down with him, big mistake. I decided to drive down behind him. I didn't see the accident, I didn't see the impact. Ray put Luke's bicycle on my car, and he had the keys to my car, and he drove it to North Conway Hospital in fall. And when we went to the hospital, and Ray and, and, and Kate, uh, his, uh, his friend, and another couple were there saying to me, he'll be, he's fine, he's fine, he'll be well. I thought he was unconscious. Uh, later on, the doctor came out and said, asked him, motion for me to sit down and I said how is he is he up now and the doctor said he's gone he's gone he was dead on arrival when the coroner came in to look at him as a woman came from Concord New Hampshire special to look at Luke she held his head and she was checking and she says his neck was broken they were wondering why I had moved the bicycle from the scene of the accident. I said, I thought he was alive. Didn't want to have to come back here and a you know, person I just met drove my car over to the hospital with his bicycle. Went out with the coroner to look at his bicycle. There wasn't a scratch on it. She said, the coroner deduced, he didn't hit the bicycle. The the tree with his bicycle. He must have braked hard and flew over his handlebars. And that's how he broke his neck. And that was the cause of death. Uh, when he was at North Conway Hospital, they didn't x-ray his neck. They x-rayed his chest. The doctor thought he had choked on something. That's the story. Baseball. He was a baseball player. His is, is a new little league ball, and uh, I'm going to put it right on over here. I I kind of wish he'd flown over his handlebars into this spot or into that spot even, but I figure he hit. He flew fairly high and hit around here where this nail is, 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 is where I saw a, um, a mark from his helmet. So, and we had this in front of the tree a few years ago in, in 2005. This all happened six years ago today. On June 4th, 2005, Luke was 10 years old. So here he is with his baseball cap. And uh, here is a Rawlings baseball for you, honey.